Hi everyone, I'm um, going to do another Blur guitar lesson today. Today we're going to focus on coffee and TV. Uh, there's a lot to get through on this one. Um, it's, it's a bit tricky. There's, there's a lot of uh, changes going on in this song. Um, but it's a lot of fun to play. Um, this song is also, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on Graham's parts. I know Damon plays the acoustic on this. Um, but I think I think most people can Google the chords for Damon's parts. It's it's Graham's little tasty bits in between that we all want to know. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So um, let's get into it. Okay, so so we've got a lot of strange chord shapes in this. It's all they it's all based around octaves, and um, you know I'm not going to pretend that I know the names of them all. And to be honest. I'll be surprised if Graham does as well. Um, but basically, if anyone's seen my Bugman video, um, it's basically the same chord shape, which is basically sweary finger on the on the root B, and then first finger on the sixth fret of the A, and then either the third or the, or the little finger, whichever one you want to use, goes on the G on the eighth fret, and then you mute all the other strings. I know Graham uses his finger, sometimes I'll do it that way, sometimes I'll do it that way, you know, it just doesn't matter. And you do that sort of strum, okay? And then on the last couple of the strums you kind of bend this note down to give it that sort of wobbly effect, which actually isn't that easy, because you've got to maintain the shape of the chord as well. And next shape is... I know it sounds a bit off, but that is what it is. And this is basically, this would be over the A minor chord, so you've got the root on the A, first finger on the full fret of the A, and then instead of, and it's the same shape as up there, but you've moved this finger down one, basically. So the first chord was there. This one is would be that shape, but you move that finger down. Sounds strange and discordant, but that's kind of what makes it cool. So, first two shapes are... Okay, and you pull down the G. And then you've got these two octaves. So you're going from... So you're going from these octave shapes, you're going on the... If you use your first finger as your guide, so we, we, we're going to number that fret. So we're going to go from 9 to 7. So, so all together. And as you should know with octave shapes, you know, you mute everything else. So it's just those two notes that need to ring. Then we go that first shape again, but this time... You do it on the G. So you go. And then you do an F. Do it, it's that kind of, so that if that's a bar, take the bar off, wrap your thumb over the top, and then leave that finger off. And it's that, there, what, that's what's ringing out. So you're going. Then the next shape is this, which is basically a G chord, and that's the way I remember. That's the best way to remember how to play it. If you do a G, I do my G with two fingers there. Take the little finger off, and then just move that there, and that's the shape. Again, muting the unnecessary strings. And then it's just a C sharp. And that's the whole loop, okay? So all together. Um, so that's basically the verse. This, the the um, the last time round of the verse, it ends slightly differently. 
So this, this would be the last time around. Now instead of going to the C sharp, this time you go to the A major. Just a standard A major chord. And then he does this. just before the chorus. So um, it's really hard to just jump in this halfway through. So. so the A major. Okay, just slide these two notes, full fret, D string and G, Add the little finger on the seventh fret, and essentially you end with an A minor shape. So it's just a quick. It's not an essential part of the song, but he does does throw them in there, and uh, these are all the bits that we love about his playing. So it's kind of important. It depends how obsessed you are about being authentic. And then we're into the chorus. It starts with a C sharp minor. C sharp minor seven, perhaps, I don't know what the name is, but you take that little finger off. So you go, this is the chorus. Okay, we're gonna do this in two halves, is the best way to describe it. So that's the first half. So C sharp minor. And that's the first chord that's in the start of the song. And then you do this slide octave thing. It goes right up there. Okay, so that's 12th, 14th fret, 14th, 12th, 11th, 7th. This time it's, just, it's some kind of C sharp, but it's slightly different. This time he's just he's instead of going like that, take that finger off and put that finger on the B string on the seventh fret. Okay, this is where it gets tricky. He does these weird little finny bits, and and it's one trying to get them that's hard, and and two it's trying to get the timing of them that's tricky. I find if I match them to the lyrics, I know where I am. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm just going to play you the whole chorus and then I'll talk you through it. It's that bit, okay? So uh, the bit on. he's doing there so he starts with that C sharp minor but a slightly different version does it like that for some reason so octave 11th fret 9th fret and then, you, and then you do this octave which is D string first finger so like 9th fret and then little finger on the 12th fret of the B string if you know your octaves, you have you know, there's various versions. You've got that, and that, and that. You know, you can sort of do them anyway. So you're jumping from these shapes to that shape. And then he does this, and then he goes. Oh, that sounds weird, but which is just uh, D string, uh, seven, eight, nine, ninth fret, and B string on the eighth fret. Okay, so it goes. And you do the B chord, and then you go around again. And then the next, what's the next line?
one chord and then you're back. I've seen him when he ascends, he does it with his thumb. Um, You might have done it like that in the album though, it sounds better like that. I hope that made sense. Um, that chorus is tricky, but I find that the timing of... It's just about getting the timing. I find that octave, the first one is on the, when he sings Going Blind. Uh, B. And then the second time you go around, you end with the D. Then an A. And you're back. And you go, a second verse is exactly the same as the first. Okay, so the guitar solo. Um, it's a bit of an anti-guitar solo, this one, which is, which is why I love it, I think. And um, I don't think you need to be note perfect um, towards the end of this solo because um, it gets a bit, you know, crazy. But um, the, the beginning bit is quite melodic, so yeah, let's, let's focus on that for now. So it starts on the 16th fret on the G. Okay, so 16th fret on the G, 16th fret on the D, and then 13 and 14 on the G. And then 14 on a D. And then 17 on the B. And then 15 on the B. And then 17 on the D, but bend it up. And then so I think 14 on the on the D and put it down. And with those two last two notes, that's when he kind of hits some kind of Effect pedal. Uh, I'm not really into effects, and so I don't really know what he uses. But it sounds like some sort of tremolo or something. But that's when that kicks in. And it goes bends the D on the seventh fret. That and that sustains. You hold that. That is just uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it gets a bit vague here. I mean, I, I sort of go like this. I like doing that. Gets a bit, you know, have fun with it, I suppose. But so yeah, yeah, he bends that that D D string on the uh, seventh fret. <laughs> fourth to the second fret and then G loads of a bar so on the fourth fret and then go up to the seventh and then eight and then ninth and then you're back into the chorus. So all the way through something like this. Something like that, you know? I don't think it needs to be bang on because I don't think he plays this solo the same every time live. It's all about the vibe, really, and just getting that feel for it. So yeah, have fun with that one. Um, I think get those melodic notes at the beginning and then after that, just piss that out. And you know, I think that's I think that's the whole point, really. A bit of an anti-guitar solo, that one. Okay, so then, then we've got the outro section. Um, cool little part. It, it sort of reminds me a little bit of uh, All Apologies by Nirvana 
which is uh, always a good thing in my book. Anyhow, <coughs> it goes like this. just goes round and round and round until the end of the song. So all it is, the seventh fret on the E string, sixth fret on the A string, and you strum those two notes together. And then with these two fingers going back and forth on the seventh and ninth fret on the A string. D major. go into the A major on the first strum you sort of roll the middle finger on okay and then up, ascend up to the next chord which is what an A sharp or whatever I don't know Okay, so that was Coffee and TV by Blur. Um, I hope some of you found that lesson useful. Um, I think that you know the trick with this song is it's you know it's a memory game, and you've got to you know when you're dealing with octaves, you know they're easy to do, but it's it's, it's hard to remember what number of fret you're supposed to do them on. And um, I think that if you practice it, get it in your head, and then hopefully the muscle memory will take over. And um, but once you get it down, it's it's a great song to play. It's, I mean, I got it's one of their best singles, I think. Let's be honest. I mean, Coffee and TV is a great song. Um, I've enjoyed um, learning it myself. I learned it today, and um, thought I'd do a lesson on it. So uh, yeah, enjoy, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.